going to share with you all this evening some of our perspective on, on innovation and design, which is what we do. Uh, 18 tidbits on the design of change. And I have 20 slides, including my intro and my conclusion. 18 fits nicely in the middle. We work on with um, companies and organizations in the public sector, private sector, on uh, on um, helping them come up with new ideas and moving the needle within the within the context that, that they're trying to work. Why do we do this? Because we need to figure out how to uh, change the environments that we work in, that we live in, our communities. We're burning through a lot more resources than we have, and we have to start to adjust our behaviors. So what is system change? What does that mean for, for, for us? It's about people changing. It's the decisions people make, the things they buy, the actions they take, the relationships they have. So if we can kind of make shifts uh, on that very individual, personal level, um, the, the greater system changes around that. But for the system to change, people need to be involved in that change. They need themselves to come up with the ideas for uh, the, the new kinds of things, the new kinds of decisions they're going to make. So nothing about me without me is sort of a driving philosophy behind the work we do. You can't tell people what to do. The, the issue though is that when people come together and do stuff together that it's very messy, it's hard to predict what happens in a room. Um, so what we try to do is try to give people tools to empower them to be better collaborators, better thinkers, better creators, so that they sort of have those tools, even when we leave, they're better collaborators. So the nugget of collaboration is the workshop. And here's a kind of an abstraction of a workshop. There's a general kind of flow to it. We start with divergence, generating lots of ideas. Then we get to exploring, which is synthesizing ideas, uh, making choices, and then converging onto some specific uh, things we want to do, an action plan. Sometimes we're working in a full, large group, so let's say there's a room of people like this, maybe 60 people, everyone's talking together. Sometimes we're in small groups of five or six, kind of working in parallel on little side projects, and sometimes there's moments where individuals are, are uh, thinking or, or sketching or reflecting on something. There's also different moments where people are uh, listening to each other, talking, making things, modeling things. Here's a model of a, uh, the experience on a TTC streetcar. So really by using these different kind of modalities uh, within the sort of creative collaborative process, um, we get to, uh, to, to ideas um, that we wouldn't otherwise. Really core in the process is this idea of prototyping. So start really small, like begin anywhere with a simple sketch, get a, a group of you know, six people and give them half an hour to solve a tough problem and they'll just come up with a paragraph or, or a sketch and then you can build, build on that, build from there. So start small and build with that. Um, work visually, so get people to draw uh, their ideas and then share and discuss those ideas and just by sort of shifting gears into the visual uh, domain, all sorts of things come into the conversation that, uh, that may not otherwise be there. Visual thinking. Um, in, in, in a kind of an experience when we're thinking about, you know, how do we want people to work, if it's too comfortable, if it's too familiar, then uh, we find that, like, that the, the creative energy doesn't come out. So we try to push people a little bit, make it a little bit uncomfortable. Maybe there's, a, maybe there's some silence, maybe they're doing things they're not used to doing, but not so far that they're freaking out and panicking. In a, in a given group as well, there's going to be different styles of, of creative problem solvers. So some people like to generate lots of ideas. On this side is sort of more imaginative, on that side it's more kind of analytical problem solving styles and we want to try to um, empower these different kinds of people to, to be creative um, in a process. Um, also thinking about who should be part of a collaboration. So who are the stakeholders? Who has, an, who has ownership over a certain problem? Uh, so we're trying to, let's say the problem is we're trying to build a better community. So there's all sorts of people who live in that community, who work in that community. Um, what we might do uh, is, over time, is develop a process where there's a series of workshops or a series of gatherings. So we come together with a certain group of people, then you know, we, we take a break for six weeks, eight weeks, three months, six months, we come back together. So there's this kind of rhythm of you work together, you split up, you do things, you spread the message, you bring the ideas out into the world. The important thing, though, at the beginning is that you have a shared vision. So that really the first step in a kind of a collaborative process where we're trying to impact an organization or a community is that 
even though there's all these divergent ideas and perspectives, there's a common vision. And the process itself, though, you can't uh, uh, predict it, it sort of emerges as you go. Um, it's really important, too, that, that there's what we call like a governance framework, that someone's in charge of, people know who's in charge of what. And um, this way you avoid having everyone trying to be in charge of everything and getting this kind of Frankenstein design where it's like designed by committee where, where everyone's you know, doing, trying to get their hands in everything and people trust each other to do things and, and take that responsibility. When you're doing this work, uh, th there's only certain people who can be in the room with you. That's this kind of core group in the middle. And then what we try to do is get them to go out and scale out those ideas and those initiatives with the people they work with. So there's this kind of scaling that happens. Uh, and then to kind of scale beyond that would be to use social media, branding, communication design, identity to sort of build a conversation beyond the group of people who are in this process and sort of scale out from there. Here's an image of some work uh, that I did with when I was working at my last company um, at OCAT on the identity. Um, at, the, at the end of the day, uh, it's about doing better work faster. So collaboration is tough, it's messy. Uh, if, we can, if we can solve tough problems together, you know, we will have a beautiful planet, beautiful blue marble to live on for many generations to come and we won't need four of them because we're probably not gonna get any more. So we're the moment. We're uh, in town, and uh, look forward to chatting with you all later. Thank you very much. I think we're waiting. <laughs>